you there everyone and I thank you guys so much for hanging out with me right here in my garden for yet another episode of my orchid adventures of course with me Maria Young so in today's episode I'm gonna be giving you an update on my fazarium case and also an update on these horrible horrid thrips that have been infecting my garden so indeed I'm gonna show you exactly what's been going on right here and right now and how has a tedious adventure with trying to control the thrips infestation in my garden? Yeah, you guys want to know how that's been doing, right? Now, this particular orchid right here with the beautiful yellow blooms, there was absolutely nothing that I could do to save those blossoms. The infestation of thrips had been so bad in this orchid right here that, yeah, the blooms just really deteriorated right away. And this is what is left over now. And of course, this was my purple one. Also, as you can see, the outcome was pretty much the same. Nothing that I could do to save those deformed, wilted blooms, as you can see here, already faded. Now, the Sunset Bangkok, they have a few blossoms that are still trying to hold on for dear life. But as you can see, the thrips did pretty much of a bang up job on this, unfortunately, as well. I mean, the thrips just really did its damage, did its thing here. But I will have to say, I looked at each and every one of my orchids, and the good news is, I haven't seen a single one of those nasty thrips insects on my orchids at all. And I have to admit, I've been spraying my orchids down. I want to say I did it like three times already with my Listerine and I don't know if that did the job or perhaps it's because it's gotten a little bit colder than it usually has been perhaps that may have done it but whatever has done it folks I am extremely happy you guys don't even know and even with this Mimi Palmer right here which had also been affected. If you're noticing on the edges of the blooms, you may be able to see some browned edges. And indeed, this was also infested with thrips. But I have to tell you, if this was still infested with the thrips, the blooms would have already been wilted, pretty much like this right here, and would have already been well on its way out. So as you can see here, the blooms are holding now and you're seeing a lot more vibrance and stiffness in the petals as well opposed to what it was starting to look like and as we take a close look behind these blossoms you remember before they were all throughout and as you can see not a single thrip insect to be found so yes indeed good news and this result is for all of my orchids i have not been able to find a single one so folks, good news indeed. Very relieved, but not too relieved. I am still spraying these down and will continue to spray them down until I have to bring them indoors. But at least I can have a sigh of relief. Woo! And folks, here is some more good news. As you can see, this is one of my Vandas that I just discovered is in spike. And yay us, the thrips does not appear to have affected this one at all. So yes, we may get a couple of more spikes from our Vanda orchids. And finger crossed that we will not see any more of the wilted and brown spikes ever again. Okay, ever again. <laughs> Okay, folks, so this is an update on the orchid that was dealing with about a fusarium. And I think the last update that we did was about two weeks ago, so I definitely wanted to give you a heads up on what's going on with it today. So here we go, folks. If we take a look at the leaves, now you're beginning to see some wilting going on. Also, if we take a close look, I did tell you guys that I did leave this orchid in the sun, and indeed, I did bake it quite a bit. So you are noticing the influence that the sun has definitely had on this orchid. Indeed, we were fighting this fusarium and this is one of the techniques that I tried to use to see if it would work. So let's go ahead and take a closer look now at the roots. And as you can see, folks, the roots are still pretty plump, still doing pretty well, and very relieved that she does still have a root system. Again, the area that I cut did not show any 
type of you know indication that the rotting was spreading so good news on that as well so now let's take a look at the blossoms did she bloom like she was supposed to and indeed she has blossomed fully totally and completely blooming each and every one of her gorgeous Dennis Sander blooms right here Is she not gorgeous, folks? I am very, very happy to see that the Fusarium has not affected this orchid in her blooming stage. And indeed, folks, it seems as if she is well on her way to full recovery. At least I am finger crossing. But of course, I'm gonna have to keep a very close eye on her because Fusarium can indeed reside within an orchid and not even show any symptoms, of course, until it wants to. So indeed, close eye on this one, and she is going to be separated from the rest of my orchids for quite some time. But indeed, folks, bravo on this orchid right here, and bravo on my attempts to definitely find a way to rescue her. And there you have it, folks. That's the latest and greatest news of what's been going on in my garden. I sure do appreciate you guys that you guys would visit me here and, of course, hang out with me for yet another orchid adventure. And you guys already know if you like this video, then what do you guys do? Right? And, of course, if you guys want to stay tuned to the latest and greatest news of my orchid adventure, then please be sure to subscribe. And if you guys want to join me on my Facebook adventures, you are more than welcome to do so. Join me at My Orchid Adventures right on Facebook. And I think you guys already know, right? Right, right, right. I do love you guys all. Mwah, 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 mwah. Mwah.